Welcome to the Big Bear Math Channel and our five minute video on taking the derivative using the product rule. In the next five minutes, we're going to cover exactly what you need to know on the AP Cal Calculus exam with regards to using the product rule. Now, I'll tell you what, AP Calculus is indeed a bear of a course, and it's time for us to go tackle some bears. First things first, let's get some of our technical jargon out of the way. What we're doing is we've been presented with this function h of x, and I'll just rewrite it so I got a little more room to dance here. Um, it's the product of f of x times g of x, hence the name product rule. And as we get ready to derive it, it's going to look a little overwhelming at first, but I think if you just kind of memorize the pattern here and talk yourself through it, you're going to be really, really successful. So what the derivative says is we're going to derive that first function, f of x, and we're going to multiply him by the second function, just the original. Then we're going to add the derivative of the second function times the first function, the original f of x. And ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That's the pattern. And a big point of emphasis is just going to be recognizing when we need to use the product rule and when to stay away from it. So really be on your toes as we go through these next three examples. So here's our first example, and the reason we know we're going to use the product rule is because of the operation that's taking place right here between the two quantities. And so I'm going to say the first quantity is f of x, and we'll say that the second quantity right here is my g of x, and then I'm just going to follow, follow the rule that we saw on the last slide. And I'm going to talk myself through it. We're going to say h prime is equal to the derivative of the first function. And in order to derive this rascal, we're just going to rely on that power rule that we used a ton in the last couple of videos. So it's 4 plus 9x squared uh, times the original second function. And then we're going to add, it's always adding, we're going to derive the second function here. So I get just negative 2. And then that's multiplied by the original first function. So 4x plus 3x cubed. Now from this point, there's still more work to be done. For instance, right here I would have to do some foiling. Um, and then over here I would distribute the negative 2. And then I would just combine all my like terms. But everything that's left to be done is just purely algebra. And so the point of this video is just to focus on the process of deriving with the product rule. And so with that being said, we're ready for example number two. All right, on our second example, we got a few extra bear traps for you. And we've got multiple terms. And as I look at this first term here, I do need the product rule because of the operation that's taking right there, uh, taking place between the x squared and the sine of x. However, I do not need the product rule in the second term because what I have is the product of a constant and a function of x. So no need for the product rule. So let's get ready to go. And I'm going to call the 6x squared my f of x, or my first uh, term. And the sine of x will be my second. And we're ready to talk our way through it and derive away. So we're going to derive the first term, which is 6x squared. And his derivative is 12x times the second function plus the derivative of sine of x, which is cosine. And if you haven't derived trig functions before, don't worry. You'll see it very shortly. And uh, that's going to be multiplied by the first function, 6x squared. Good news is, is there's really no cleanup to be done there. And then plus, and again, we said we're not using product rule here because it's just a single term. And we'll say his derivative is 3 cosine of x. Basically, all we're do doing is deriving sine of x and then carrying the multiple of 3 down with us. And so as we said, there's, very, there's no cleanup really to be done. The only thing you really could do is maybe slide that 6x squared in front of cosine, but a very minor detail. So as we're doing this video, we're kind of assuming that you're preparing for the AP exam and you've kind of been through the course once and been exposed to a lot of things. And so what we're going to do on this last one, if you've, um, if you've seen chain rule before, you're going to really appreciate this one. So we recognize product, 5x squared is my first, and then radical x plus 1 is my second. And as I get ready to derive this term right here, I'm going to have to use chain rule. But before we get too anxious, I just want to rewrite this original function so that the radical is now rewritten as a fractional exponent. Um, it may be tempting to distribute the 5x squared through the quantity, but just make sure that's a big no-no because of the exponent being one half. And we're now ready to derive away. The derivative is going to be, let's see, we'll derive the first term, which is 10x times the second term. All right. And then we're going to add, now we're going to derive that first term. And here's where my chain rule kicks in. And it's going to be the derivative of the outer function. Leave the inner alone. Subtract 1 from that exponent. Derived by the uh, derivative of the inner function, but that's just a 1. And then we're going to lastly, we're going to multiply by the first function, 5x squared. 
Now, cleaning this one up is going to involve a little bit of work, but again, everything from this point forward is purely algebra. Whether you want to rewrite them as fractions or pull out a GCF, um, I think you can definitely do that. So, in closing, if you need to see more examples or just a more in-depth lesson, be sure to check out our full 20-minute video on the product rule, and you can simply search through our channel for that. And the road to earning a 5 on the AP exam is one that is full of hard work, perseverance, and certainly a fearless mindset to tackle that bear.